In this video, we'll continue our conversation about the confidence interval estimate for a population mean. Except now, what do we do when we don't know the population standard deviation? So in real world application, we often do not know the population standard deviation. So we have to modify our confidence interval estimation process we just learned. This is because when we're working with samples, our sample standard deviation varies from sample to sample. So we have to modify our process to account for this variation. So while the general format still looks the same, we've got our point estimate, plus or minus our critical value and our standard error, we have to modify our formula slightly. Instead of a critical Z value, we are now working with critical T values. And since we don't know the population standard deviation, instead of seeing sigma, we now see the lowercase s, which means sample standard deviation. And if you forget any of these symbols, you can find them on our glossary on our Canvas homepage. So our point estimate is still our sample mean, but in order to get the critical t value, we have to use Excel. Note that there is an appendix F in the back of the textbook, uh, that our chapter shows us how to read. So if you prefer to use the appendix, you can. And if you need help with that, you can let me know. But I'm going to show you how to do it in Excel. In order to get the critical T value, we also need to know our degrees of freedom. That's n minus 1, where our little n is our sample size. Our standard error is similarly structured. We're just using our sample standard deviation over the square root of n. Note that you learned how to do this in chapter three. So in Excel, the formula for a sample standard deviation is equals stdev dot s, s for sample. So how does the t distribution and standard normal distribution compare? The t distribution is wider or more spread than the standard normal distribution because there's more variation when we are working with samples. Both the standard normal distribution and the t distribution are bell-shaped and symmetrical. There is only one standard normal distribution, and we already learned it. We learned it in chapter six, we learned it in chapter seven, and we're using it again here in chapter eight. There are many different t distributions, and it depends on our degrees of freedom. And our degrees of freedom are based on our sample size. So depending on what our n is, it's going to give us a different t distribution. The t distribution is more spread out than the standard normal distribution. So here in the blue is our standard normal distribution. And we've got two examples of t distributions at different degrees of freedom. Our t distribution is defined by the degrees of freedom. And so as our degrees of freedom increases, the t distribution gets closer to the normal distribution. In other words, the bigger the sample, the closer we get to normal distribution. Let's look at an example. The distribution of overtime hours per week for employees at Legoland is normally distributed. A random sample of n equals 10 employees is selected, producing a sample mean of 4.5 hours and a sample standard deviation of 1.3 hours. Construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval estimate for the population mean. So our point estimate is our sample mean and that's given to us at 4.5 hours in the story. Next, we're looking at how many degrees of freedom. So we need our sample size of 10, and we'll subtract one, and that gives us degrees of freedom of nine. Then we also need to make sure we understand where our sample standard deviation, or lowercase s, is. So that was given to us at 1.3 hours. And again, our lowercase n is our n of 10 employees we've got our variables that we will need for our formula. What's missing is our critical t value, and we have to use Excel to find that. So when using Excel, we have to remember that when you see alpha, which is our Greek letter A, that's just one minus our confidence level. So for instance, if our confidence level was 95%, we'll do one minus are 0.95 and it gives us an alpha of 0.05. Since we don't know the population standard deviation, we're finding a t critical value. And so the formula is equals t dot inv dot 2t and you'll enter in your alpha and your degrees of freedom, where the degrees of freedom is your sample size minus one. 
And so, for instance, uh, an example of a 95% confidence level with a certain alpha and a certain degrees of freedom, when we enter it in, would be 2.2622. Also using Excel, we can find the margin of error, which is the right side of our confidence interval estimate formula. So we would use confidence.t, enter in your alpha, enter in your sample standard deviation, and your sample size. That's your little n. And so here's an example. If, if we enter it in, we would get this margin of error right here. So let's go ahead and, you, and continue on with the problem. Here's uh, the data we had about our Legoland example. So to find our t-critical value at 95% confidence based on 9 degrees of freedom, and again, the 9 degrees of freedom came from our n minus 1, we would use t.inv.2t, plug in my alpha, which is just 1 minus our confidence level, and our degrees of freedom of 9. So I'll type in equals t.inv.2t, parentheses, our alpha or our probability of 0 0.05 and our degrees of freedom of 9. Close my parentheses and we get our critical t value of 2.2622. So now we can go ahead and take our variables and plug it into the formula. So we have our sample mean of 4.5 overtime hours plus or minus our critical t value we just found here, 2.2622, our sample standard deviation of 1.3, divided by the square root of our sample size of 10. So we want to make sure we know where all these variables came from. I'll go ahead and simplify the right side here to get our margin of error on the right. So our margin of error can be found using Excel, equals confidence.t, so I'll plug in the alpha, our standard deviation, and our sample size. So here's our margin of error when the population standard deviation is unknown. So we'll type in equals confidence dot t parentheses. Our alpha was 0 0.05 because remember our alpha is just 1 minus the confidence level of 95%. Our standard deviation was 1.3 and our sample size was 10. Closing that out and hitting enter we get 0 0.9299. And so I can round this. And now we have our confidence interval estimate with our sample mean plus or minus our margin of error. So we'll go ahead and subtract our margin of error from our sample mean to get the lower limit and add our margin of error of 0 0.93 to our sample mean of 4.5 to get the upper limit. In other words, based on our sample data with 95% confidence, we can conclude that our population mean of overtime hours is somewhere between 3.57 hours and 5.43 hours. And so the purpose of knowing this kind of information is now we can make better business decisions based on actual data. Now we can estimate what the typical overtime hours is, so we can know how much this will impact our budget. Perhaps we don't want as many overtime hours and we want to create more shifts of straight time. So this kind of information can be used to help save money, create more jobs, or even change shift scheduling. So just remember, when our population standard deviation is unknown, the main difference from what we did earlier in our other video is that we have to find a T value instead of a Z value, and we use Excel, this formula right here. Let's go ahead and do problem nine uh, on our worksheet. A random sample of 12 values was taken from a normally distributed population. Use the following sample to construct a 95% confidence interval estimate for the population mean. In step one, let's make sure we know what our sample size is. So our little n was given to us at 12 values. You could also have counted how many values we have here, and you'll know we've got 12 values we're working with. In step two, we want to make sure we identify the confidence level. So in our story, we were told that what we want is a 95% confidence interval estimate. So we're going to use 95. In step three, we need to find our sample mean and sample standard deviation. You already learned how to do this back in chapter three, where we use these two formulas, equals average and equals standard dev dot s, s for sample. So here's our data in Excel. We'll do equals average, parentheses, select my data, close parentheses and hit enter. So I have my average of 102. And then to get the sample standard deviation, I type in STDEV for standard dev, dot S for sample, parentheses, select my data, close out, 
And so our sample standard deviation, once rounded, and I use my decimals here to move over, so we have a nice clean number, is 6.89. So on our worksheet, go ahead and jot down our sample mean of 102 and our sample standard deviation, or lowercase s, at 6.89. Now in step four, we have to determine our critical t value from the t distribution. So we want to make sure we know our confidence level, and it might feel redundant, but I want to make sure we know all our pieces so that we plug in the right information into Excel. So our confidence level we wanted was 95%. Our degrees of freedom is based on n minus 1. So in this example, our n was 12. So 12 minus 1 gives us a degrees of freedom of 11. So now we can use Excel, and so you'll use the equals t.inv.2t, plug in our alpha. Again, our alpha is just the 1 minus our confidence level. That's why I have you state it here. So 1 minus 0.95 is our alpha of 0 0.05, and then our degrees of freedom of 11. So here's the critical t value for when our population standard deviation is unknown. So if I type in equals t.inv.2t, parentheses, we get the alpha over probability of 0 0.05, comma, and our degrees of freedom of 11. Do parentheses. And so our critical T value is 2.2010. Now in step five, we need to compute our confidence interval estimate. So we're going to take all our pieces of information and put it into this formula. We have our sample mean of 102, plus or minus our T critical value we found in Excel, We've got our standard deviation that we also found in Excel and our sample size of n equals 12. So you can use a calculator to solve this margin of error on the right here, or we can use Excel. And so you would type in equals confidence.t, plug in our alpha, our standard deviation, and our sample size. So I'll type in equals confidence.t, parentheses, our alpha, was 0 0.05, because it's 1 minus that 95%, comma, our standard deviation was 6.89, and our sample size was 12. So close out the parentheses and hit enter. So the margin of error here, and we'll want to round it a little bit, is 4.38. So I've got my 102 plus or minus 4.38. So we'll subtract our margin of error of 4.38 from our sample mean of 102 to get the lower limit and add it to 102 to get our upper limit. So we'd get 97.62 up to 106.38. So if you want to do that in Excel, I would take my equals 102 sample mean minus the 4.38. I get my 97.62. And I'll do equals, we'll do our sample mean of 102 plus our margin of error of 4.38. And I get my upper limit of 106.38. So you can use calculators or Excel at your convenience, whatever is easier for you. But here is our confidence interval estimate. In other words, our true population mean, when we don't know the population standard deviation, is somewhere between 97.62 and 106.38. So if you have the raw data, there's actually another way that you can get the margin of error and in turn the confidence interval estimate. What you would do is in your data file, you'll go to the data tab and data analysis and choose descriptive statistics. This might sound familiar since you may have done this for your part two in your research project. You'll select your data and check summary statistics and state the confidence level for your mean. In this case, it might be 95% and click OK. What will appear is all of our descriptive statistics and you'll be given the margin of error in this bottom number. And at the top of our table is our mean. If you know the mean and if you know our margin of error, then you can just do the plus or minus to get the lower and upper limits. I'll do a separate video to show you how to do this using your Airbnb data.